Legendary Grandmaster Mikhail Tall shows us the perfect way to sacrifice against the Sicilian defense in this game from the Soviet Championship against Lev Polugayevsky. This was played in the year 1959. These are the basic building blocks of how to sacrifice against the Sicilian. Tall has white, Polugayevsky black. Let us jump right in. Tall begins with e4. C5, the Sicilian defense, played by uh, Grandmaster Polagayevsky. Knight F3, D6. D4, the open Sicilian, is played. Cd4, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3. And here, uh, Black decides to play A6, or the Nydorf variation of the Sicilian. Um, Lev Polagayevsky has his own variation of the Sicilian that is named after him, although he does not play that in this game. Tall does choose to play the sharpest line with white, the absolute main line. Bishop to g5, applying immediate pressure to this knight on f6. And if that knight were to go, the d5 square would become quite vulnerable for black. So he plays knight b to d7 to back up that knight. If it's captured, he could take with the other knight. And now bishop to c4. We see Tall is not wasting any time. He's getting his minor pieces out as quickly as he possibly can. He already has all four out, and they're applying maximum pressure this bishop, of course, aims at f7, and in particular, the e6 and f7 pawn structure that will emerge soon. Uh, black plays queen to a5, a very useful move in the Sicilian. Uh, it pins the knight on c3 and also attacks the bishop at g5. But Tall's next move puts an end to both of those things. Queen to d2 relieves the pin of the knight and also defends the bishop that is sitting at g5. e6 is played, uh, the idea of getting this bishop to e7 and to blunt this bishop at c4. However, this move e6 sets up what is a universally important sacrifice in the Sicilian defense, one that white must know and black must constantly be aware of. Now here, uh, white can castle long or short. He can castle queenside. Here Tall actually castles kingside, and he said in his book, My Life in Games, that the reason he did this, he was playing against the move b5. Because if black plays b5, he responds with bishop to d5, which is a sacrifice of a whole piece. And after pawn takes bishop, you don't take on d5 immediately, but knight to c6. Looks like it's just sitting there, but it's hitting the queen. And when the queen moves to b6, then you retake on d5. And uh, computers actually show this is equal, even though white is down a piece. But this is the kind of position you would never, ever, ever allow tall to get if you could prevent it. This would Tall would be at his happiest in a position like this. So uh, Pologayevsky instead calmly plays the bishop to e7, rook a to d1, and we can see Tall is, I mean, the development is perfect here. After knight to c5, putting some pressure on e4, rook f to e1. Every minor piece developed, the heavy piece is completely centralized, ready to attack. He has beautiful development. The bishop goes to d7. Tall plays a3, threatening b4, forking the queen and the knight. So black has to do something about that because he'd lose a piece after b4. So the queen retreats to c7 and also creates some x-ray pressure against the bishop at c4, which is currently undefended. Um, but Tall continues with his aggressive plan. b4. Now there's a real method to this madness. So this is a positionally a weakening move. But he knows that it's going to do that because he can set up that ideal sacrifice that he was so famous for. He played in so many games. The knight has to basically go to a4. There's no other square for it. Tall takes that knight, and then bishop takes e4. And that's his idea, to take this bishop at d7 and distract it from this e6 square. And this is where this very important sacrifice is played in this game. Uh, I've sort of said where it, co where it happens, and it's this move, bishop takes e6. Now, Tall had uh, a rule. Basically, if you sacrifice a piece, if in exchange you get two pawns and your opponent's king is trapped in the center, then that's a worthwhile sacrifice. If he had a chance to do that, trade a piece for two pawns and his opponent's king stuck in the center, he pretty much would automatically do it. And it's probably a pretty good principle for any of us to follow. Pawn takes bishop, knight takes e6. So he gets what he wants. He gets the two pawns, and the king is stuck in the center. And for the moment, he's hitting the queen at the c7, uh, as well as the bishop, I mean, the pawn, excuse me, at g7. A queen takes c2. Black recovers one of those pawns. 
And when you have this sort of dynamic position with the, your opponent's king stuck in the middle, you want to keep queens on the board if you're white. You want to exchange them if you're black because you need that queen to put pressure on the king. So Tal avoids the exchange of queens. And now uh, Pologayevsky plays king to f7. The idea is doing what they call castling by hand, where you basically just manually move the king and the rook without doing it all at once. He wants to take this rook at h8 and develop it and then tuck that king back to g8 and uh, hopefully be safe. But Tall plays rook to c1. He hits the queen, but also threatens to penetrate onto the seventh rank. A very powerful idea. Queen goes to a2. So the way Tall would think, and the really when you make a sacrifice, you have to think this way. How do you open up more lines? Well, we open up lines in chess by exchanging pawns. So Tall immediately plays e5, seeking to exchange the d-pawn for the e-pawn and open up more lines of attack. Uh, if queen to e6, by the way, then just pawn takes knight, and the pawn attacks the knight, the rook attacks the queen. So that does not work. So he needs to retake, which he does, but now queen takes, e5. Now, in this position, uh, Pologayevsky could have played queen to d5, and despite the sacrifices, the position is fairly equal, even though white is down a whole piece. Uh, but here Pologayevsky plays a different idea, one that shocks, shocks you when you first see it, um, and it's the move queen takes f2 check. It looks like he's just losing his queen, but actually he has a little tactic in mind after king takes queen, as was played in the game. Knight to g4, check. This is the key idea. Forking the king and the queen on e5. As it turns out, modern computers show that this wasn't quite as good as queen to d5, but it's still good enough to come very close to equality for black. Uh, Grandmaster Pologayevsky was a legendary player, so he, he knew how to handle himself. King g1, knight takes queen. Rook takes uh, knight. So in this position, white is still better. The main reason is because of the development of these rooks. The rooks are active, whereas black's rooks are still on their original squares. But Tall has to strike quickly to take advantage of that uh, lead in development. Bishop takes g5. Knight takes g5. Check. Black's king goes to g6. It would be a big mistake to play king to f6 here because then Tal could play rook c to c5, and the threat of rook to e6 mate is very, very hard uh, to deal with. If bishop to d7 to control the e6 square, then a4 stabilizes the knight, and white is just much better um, in this position with all kinds of potential, potential threats. Uh, so instead, Pologayevsky plays the king to g6, trying to get out of those threats. Um, Knight to e6 by Tall. What he wants to do now, since he has this king exposed, is use his lead in development to create mating traps with the rook and with the knight supporting those, uh, those rooks. Rook h to e8. Now rook to e3. Again, he wants to play maybe rook to f1, rook to g3, then rook f4, h4, mate, assuming white was cooperative, which, uh, excuse me, black was cooperative, which he won't be. But uh, that's his plan. Rook A to C8, obviously wanting to trade off a pair of rooks so those threats would just completely disappear. Rook to F1. Black cannot contest the F file because the knight controls the F8 square. So bishop to B5, aiming directly at the rook at F1. Rook to G3, check. King to H6. So we see this king has very little room to maneuver now. And uh, the threat of rook to f4, h4, mate is really serious. Um, despite that, white doesn't have a decisive edge yet, but black has to make very precise defensive moves to survive. Uh, Tall plays knight to g7 with the very nasty threat of rook to f6, checkmate. A tough move to deal with. So here, Pologayevsky plays rook to f8 to challenge that rook to keep it from going to f6. The rook goes to e1. He's going to threat check from e6 and the same mating pattern, basically. So rook to f6 keeps the rook from doing that. He's using that rook to defend those threats. Now h3, this gives his king a little bit of room to maneuver so there won't be any back rank mates. And in this position, the best move for black is bishop to d7. 
he can survive with this move. And the reason it works is because it keeps the knight from going to f5. And we'll see why that's significant here in a second. Uh, but instead, he plays rook to c2, a very aggressive move, controlling the seventh rank. But as it turns out, it's a bridge too far. And after rook to e4, the threat of rook to h4 mate is very, very serious. Rook to g6, um, the problem with that is knight to f5 check. And that's why the bishop was better on d7, because it would have prevented that move. The king is forced to h5, and then rook h4 would be checkmate. So he has to find another way to deal with the uh, rook to h4 mate idea. He plays the rook to c4. That does keep it from going to h4 and delivering mate. Paul plays rook to e5. Now with the threat of rook to h5, checkmate. Rook to c1, check. And king to h2. And there is nothing to be done to keep white from winning the game. He doesn't actually have a forced checkmate. Black can actually dodge the checkmate here with the move rook to g6. Uh, but then after knight to f5, check. The king is forced to h5, setting up a discovered attack. And then after knight to e7 check, he's threatening the rook as well as delivering check. So black would lose a decisive amount of material and let Polagayevsky resign. This is the most important sacrifice to know in the Sicilian defense, the sacrifice on the square E6. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you again soon.